Um, thank you for tuning in again. Um, the paper I'm going to be talking about today, which is uh, the title of it, will be the Hox Protein Mutation and Macroevolution of Insect Body Plan. And this was done by in the McGinnis Lab at UCSD. So this paper is looking at um, this Hox protein, which is this master regulator protein. And what what it does is it pretty much controls limb development in a sense of everything. We have Hox proteins as well, um, but the paper is mainly looking at Drosophila. And what we're looking at right here is what was Hox genes, the Hox genes role in the change from like multi-limbed to just six-limbed um, insects. So there's, there's a change and people believe that Hawks, and then here's where the issue is, if Hawks was sufficient in some genetic, some genetic like frame shift mutation or insertion or deletion or something like that, um, was that sufficient in changing the body plan or was there really something else that was required in order for there to be the body plan mutation that we see? And for some background to this paper in regards to Hox genes, just very briefly. Um, so one of the Hox genes that they're looking at in this paper is called ultrabithorax, and it's abbreviated as UBX. Um, and UBX's function is to repress the transcription of this protein called um, distillus. And what distillus does normally or you, like when distillus is transcribed and then translated, um, distillus uh, allows for limb growth and limb formation. So what ultrabithorax does, which is the Hox protein, is it uh, inhibits or it represses the transcription of distillus, thereby not allowing limb growth. And that's just some background to understand when I just say UBX or DLL, which are two common terms that I'm going to be using. So, um, with the paper in front of us, um, we're looking at figure one, which is right here. And what this figure is telling us, it's just a simple blast sequence, which is uh, a sequencing of this protein. And so they've blasted um, four different species. And the top one is the brine shrimp, which is the one with a lot of legs. Um, and then there's Drosophila, which is the one on the left. And then they also have Mosquito and then Velvet Worm. And from here, you look. this one is not the best copy. There's, you can download the one that is in color, and it'll show the uh, areas of homology better. And what this is saying is they're trying to find out what areas are conserved and uh, which areas were diverged. Um, on this chart and what we see from this is um, areas that have been diverged between the Artemia and the Dros uh, compared to the Artemia to the Drosophila are areas of interest because potentially if we think that the UBX protein is responsible for this um, then there should be some it should be a change in some part of the UBX that would be responsible for the change that we see in phenotype so this is important because it narrows down our area of interest to certain parts of the protein. So now we're moving on to figure two of the paper. And figure 2a is a visualization check to see if their system works equally with different types of UBX that they've put in. So this is the four pictures that we're looking at right here in figure 2a and what's happening so what what they're wanting to do is they're wanting to ectopically express they want to express UBX all throughout uh, Drosophila but they want to express different species of UBX so like Artemia and like so on and so forth but they want to put them into Drosophila and see hmm, maybe if we put Artemia UBX into Drosophila, maybe the Drosophila will grow more um, like legs because there's like some repressive function that the Drosophila UBX has. I think I said that right. So in this figure, we have the top left, which is our 
I guess it, it, would, it wouldn't be, a, I don't think it's a negative, but it would be an internal control. And this internal control is saying where normally does UBX expression occur? And from here, it's stained with um, FP6.87, which is the antibody they use to stain for UBX. So this is just basic, where does Drosophila UBX show up on a normal Drosophila embryo? We move over to the right, or I guess we can go down. So the far left figure shows what the UBX, UBX expression is when they ectopically express uh, Drosophila UBX in a um, embryo. And what we're wanting is we're wanting like complete exposure, or we want complete like binding and presentation of UBX throughout because it's ectopic throughout. And it's under an armadillo uh, driver, so it just occurs throughout the entire um, embryo. So that's what we see from here. And they also are staining with the same antibody that was used in the upper figure. The figure to the right, however, is the same system as this under the armadillo driver, but it's actually Artemia. I'm pretty sure. It's Artemia UBX. So now we're trying to see if these pretty much have the same similar, like have are similar in expression of UBX, because if they have similar expression, then the paper can go on forward and say, Okay, so now that they express the same, what we're really looking at is um, a difference in the protein structure, not necessarily uh, concentration-based. Um, with these figures, however, you it's hard to tell on this, but it does not seem like there's equal, equal expression of UBX, so I think these figures are not, not super great for them to choose. They should have probably chosen better ones. and they, I think they went through like 12 pictures. Um, of this to just uh, show like um, nullifying variants and possibilities and stuff like that. But from this, they probably should have chosen better finger figures or done like a image J analysis or something like that and just shown like uh, like just uh, measured brightness pretty much. Um, and the last one is um, another staining with the Artemia UBX. But with all these UBX, they put an HA tag on them, which is a common uh, uh, identification marker that they that they use on like some proteins that you want to see where they're expressed. Um, and it's just really easy because with the HA tag, you can have anti-HA uh, antibodies that will bind to it. And this is just a control to show that it really is the or UBX that. It, that the um, FP6.87 is binding to because the only thing that has HA in this embryo would be this armadillo driver or would, would, be the, would be the Artemia UBX under the armadillo driver. So now we're looking at figure 2B and 2C which are trying to determine if the different types of UBX are expressed equally um, under the armadillo driver. So, to me personally, I think these are kind of redundant. The first one, figure 2B, aside from the drawing that they do, uh, the rest of them I think are done with like light microscopy, like they just do a light microscope, something like very basic like that. Um, they don't really go into detail about how they find the figure or how they uh, take images like this, but I'm assuming it's just light microscopy and then just like Zen software or something like that. Um, these, however, um, are interesting to me as well um, because these are different stages of, or this is a different stage from this for the embryo. Um, so this is larva and here we're looking at um, distillus expression then the then DLL304 which is a uh, dill enhancer and they fuse this with LAC-Z and LAC-Z creates beta-galactosidase from Escherichia coli um, but it creates beta galactosidase, and then that's then they can then they have an antibody that uh, binds to beta galactosidase, and then from there they're able to locate um, if the uh, enhancer is turned on because it's it's fused with uh, laxy. So that's this, and the ant p is something else. I I don't really remember, but um, the interesting thing from here is you're just trying to see equal expression that's done. Um, between the 
Drosophila and the Artemia UBX. And there is kind of a different expression. There's actually none here, and here there is. And these, the arrows that they're pointing at, these are called Keelan's organs, and Keelan's organs are just simply the progenitors, I guess you would call them, of the limbs. So there's six Keelan's organs on um, the thoracic segment of Drosophila, and each one turns into a leg. So now we're moving on to figure three in the paper. So they have confirmed, or what they're trying to say is they've confirmed that there's equal expression of Artemia UBX as well as Drosophila UBX um, under the armadillo driver um, in Drosophila embryos. So now that they've proven that from this point, now they're, so yeah, so they confirmed that they're set up was like true and valid. True and valid. And now what they're going to be doing is they're going to be modifying this UBX protein and seeing how it relates to the Keelan organ repression, which remember those are the progenitors that form into legs. So the whole next figure is like super interesting. This is probably the most important figure of the paper coupled with the last figure, which is their, their idea. But um, this figure is so interesting. So they have all the different types of um, uh, uh, UBX. So, but they've edited them. They've edited a couple of them. So these are the, the first two are the baselines. And that's Drosophila UBX, which is 100% repression, which we would think because UBX represses distillus, which, and, but distillus is responsible for limb formation. So, you, so the UBX uh, for Drosophila actually uh, inhibits uh, keel and organs. So 100% keel and organ repression with Drosophila UBX. With our team of UBX, there isn't really um, repression. Oh, okay. There isn't really repression. So actually, um, scratch what I was saying earlier, this kind of is makes sense now because the Artemia UBX doesn't really stop the DLL304, the enhancer, um, because Drosophila actually is allowed to repress the enhancer. Um, but Artemia isn't, so then hence that we see the lack Z in this figure. Um, but that's a side point. But here... So I messed up on that, I'm sorry. Um, but here are the two baselines that we're looking at right here. And those are interesting because we're going to be comparing, um, they're going to be making hybrids or chimeric proteins um, with Drosophila and Artemia. So the first one they do is a, like a Drosophila first part, and then at 281 they go Artemia. And they do that, they do 365 Artemia, and from there there's like 10, 15%, or yeah, 10 to 5 to 10% uh, increase in keelan organ repression. So it's more similar to what Drosophila is doing. Um, but when you switch it around and you have the Artemia and you you put at, and at 250, um, the 250 amino acid, you switch and you put the remainder of the Drosophila UBX, um, it totally changes and you get 70% repression. So it goes from a 15% to a 70% repression because they switched out the lot from 250 to the end. They switched out for Artemia and they put in Drosophila. So that's kind of interesting though. So it, so it kind of suggests that the C terminus of this protein is responsible for the repression of keelan organs. But they do an Artemia and they just take out the C terminus. And from there, I think then this is the most important one. Uh, maybe not the most, but it's really important because they take out the C terminus and there's an 80% increase. So instead of actually swapping in the Drosophila UBX, they just took out some part of the Artemia UBX and the keelan organ uh, repression increased like crazy. It increased almost by, or increased 55%. Um, but, so that's kind of interesting for us to see because from this, we think now that hmm, maybe there's something in the C terminus of, of Artemia that is responsible for um, internally repressing the UBX protein from working and repressing distillus. So there's like a, like a checking factor kind of here that calms down the UBX before UBX does its job with repressing distillus. So this that's super interesting. Um, 
There's also the QA domain that they took out as well from Drosophila and they showed 80%. And then they did this these serines as well further down. Um, and they showed, they changed like the serines to three anines or something like that. And it, and it really made a huge difference um, as well in the Q1 organ repression. So now that we're interested in the C. terminus, um, this paper really comes through and makes its full point. And you can, the whole point of the paper, in my opinion, is this line on the last page. Um, and it says, this indicates that the C terminus and specifically the QA motif are not required for the full repressive activities of Drosophila UBX or Artemia slash Drosophila UBX hybrids, and that the C terminus 29 amino acids of Artemia UBX are inhibiting a limb repression domain elsewhere in that protein. So, um, this, so, it's, so it's kind of interesting because it's not really the C terminus affecting distillus, but rather the C terminus affecting something inside UBX, which then, which then like modulates or mod like kind of modifies the way that it interacts with distillus. And um, this is their idea of how it works in the paper. Something in the C terminus um, does a limb repression function to some other portion, some other domain of the protein earlier on. And so that's their, that's what they are thinking is going on here. And um, just to wrap it up, figure four right here as well is just showing you the C terminus of like different types of insecta. And it just shows like where the divergence happens and how different uh, the C terminus are, C termini are. And eventually we would see like the, mod, the change in the C terminus will then affect the way the limb repression function happens in the UBX. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So to wrap up this Ron Saugen paper, um, this was made in 2002, and this was done at UCSD, um, and I'm pretty sure it was in the McGinnis lab. They usually put like the PIs at the end of the list of authors. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so the main point of this paper is the, the UBX protein is not responsible the chain, the UBX protein change is not responsible for the differentiation in insects, but rather the C terminus change of UB of uh, in the UBX of different species affects a limb repressor uh, domain that's that's upstream of the C terminus in the UBX, and that is the action that inhibits the ability for UBX to repress distillus. And therefore, um, and since it represses distillus, there is no limb formation.